This is Echo 3, and let's discuss making our own TIE Fighter. This cockpit seems to be the closest one we've got in the game for a TIE Fighter. I'm going to fill this thing with reaction wheels. That's how this thing's really going to be controlled. Then I'm going to use the circle on the floor to help shape my ball style cockpit that the craft has. It just seems to be a good reference point. Then we'll just close off the cockpit here, and that's the foundation for our vehicle. Recently, I've been having some fun making some sci-fi inspired ships. The TIE Fighter is fairly easy to replicate in the game, and I'm just going to try and do my best to make it look pretty close to what a TIE Fighter looks like from the movies. I'm using these structural pieces mostly just for looks. The I-beams are going to help support all of those wing structures. The two engines are going to be part of the drive system. They'll be functional. The one towards the front is actually going to be for producing fuel. This is a sci-fi inspired ship, so I don't mind using a Kraken drive to power this thing. I'm going to be making use of the infinite fuel exploit to make this thing work. So technically, you don't have to use anything from the cheat menu to make this work. It will work on its own, but it does require an exploit to make this behave like a science fiction inspired ship. So I'm going to be breaking the laws of physics, but it's science fiction, so I assume that's perfectly okay. Now let's form these solar panel things on the side of the TIE Fighter. I'm going to use these large triangle pieces. They seem to be pretty close to be able to make something similar. So we're just going to flip these around and situate these as needed. These inner two I have connected to that I-beam, so then I'll have fewer distance parts from the center of the craft. Then everything is auto-strutted to the grandparent part. So by copying and pasting these parts around, that's how I'm going to do that. And they will maintain connection to grandparent part, so I won't have to redo all of that. Although looking back, I should have also put them to rigid attachment. I don't want these things to flop around at all. I want this to really hold its shape. And so I'm going to quickly put all of these in rigid attachment mode. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And then it will hold its shape pretty well. It doesn't seem to wobble too much no matter what stresses I put on this. Now I'm going to set up the Cal 1000 here so I can have my crack and drive. This is the Cal 1000 exploit, so this does take the Breaking Ground DLC to do this. You could use some other form of crack and drive to make this work. If you wanted to, just whatever you're doing, you can throw it inside that ball part. I'm using this infinite fuel, and I'm also going to overclock the Cal 1000, so I'll be getting like 300% thrust as opposed to 100% thrust. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste some of these values using the RPM value off of that rotor. That's my personal preference for how to do this. It's, it's pretty easy to overclock the Cal 1000 and get the exact values you want. So I'm going to produce way more thrust than these engines are normally capable of. The Bobcat engine is part of the Making History DLC. Not that you would need it to make a craft like this. I just like that it has the two nozzles, so I have the twin engines, as it were, for my TIE Fighter. Just seems about right. I'm going to be trying to line up my engines with the center of mass. I'm not using the Kerbal Engineer display. I just need to get close. It'll be all right. These engines can gimbal enough that as long as I'm mostly in line with the center of mass, this craft will work fine. And then I've got lots of reaction wheels to help with any corrections if anything's slightly off center even with this engine producing 300% more thrust than normal. And I am setting up a couple action groups here so that I can turn my lift engines on and off and my main engines on and off. Because this is a sci-fi ship, it does need to be able to take off vertically. I made a mistake and I needed to flip the values on my throttle on the interior engine, so I'm just doing that here and the craft should be ready to go. Let's see what a science fiction inspired ship can do in Kerbal Space Program. The Thud does a great job taking off. It is not overclocked at all, so it's got plenty of power to handle a ship like this. And we can just zip around 
really easily. It can fly nimbly and quick, just kind of like a TIE fighter does. So this is pretty fun to do if you want to replicate any of your favorite science fiction ships then go ahead, use some of these crack and drives and take advantage of what the game can do. It's a, it's a game, have fun. It's a single player game. There aren't really rules about cheating or anything like that. Have fun, enjoy what this game can do. And I've had some fun making TIE Fighters. Some other people have recommended that I try making some X-Wings or some other ships as well. You could even use the fireworks if you want to make missiles or bombs for these things as well. Or you can get some mods like the BD Armory mod and be able to shoot that way. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me to discuss these science fiction chips. I'll see you next time.